Hi guys, it's Mr. Berry. Um, I'm not here today because I'm taking a certification exam to continue to teach you guys, um, but I'm going to pre-record my lecture today. And at the end of today's lesson, you guys are going to be making a foldable. Um, I will show you an example of that foldable after I'm done. So yesterday we were discussing um, matter. And today what we're going to discuss is how matter changes from phase to phase. So you guys are all very familiar with solids, liquids, and gases right now, but we're going to talk about how does it change in between a solid, liquid, and gas. So the first thing you need to understand in order to understand how matter changes is what is energy? Because there's this whole idea of these particles have energy and they're moving, but what is energy? So we're going to define energy as the ability to do work or cause change. So in our class, we've talked a lot about this kinetic energy, and I've showed you pictures of solids, liquids, and gases, and how their particles are moving around. And kinetic energy is the energy of motion. There's lots of different kinds of energy. You've probably heard of potential energy before, and this is kinetic energy, movement. So. We discussed yesterday that particles with lots of motion, gases, have lots of kinetic energy, they're moving fast, they're moving far apart, and they have less attraction between the particles. Solids, on the other hand, have much less kinetic energy. So I'll give you guys a second to take some notes on this. I know I just whizzed through that. Also, this will be online. So if you need to take some notes or you need to reference this, check online. energy of all the particles in a sample of matter. So if I have a solid, all of the energy of all those particles moving around is known as the thermal energy. And you notice that thermal, the word, has something to do with thermometer or temperature, and it absolutely does. So temperature is the average kinetic energy of the individual particles in a substance. So the average energy that all of these particles are moving is known as the temperature. So temperature and thermal energy are very closely related. So hot substances, things that we touch that are hot, have a lot more kinetic energy versus Something like ice water or snow has much less kinetic energy. So, heat. Sometimes we talk about things are getting hot or getting cold. In reality, in the world of science, heat moves from its source to somewhere where it's going to be absorbed. Cold doesn't really move anywhere. It's heat that we're talking about. Heat is thermal energy. So thermal energy is moving from an area of high temperature to low temperature. Cold doesn't move. Heat moves because that's energy. So for example, when you are boiling water, you have your pot of water on the stove. You have this coil that is heating up underneath your pot of water, and that is a source of lots of thermal energy. That thermal energy is being transferred it is moving to the water and to the pot. So, now that you guys kind of have an idea about thermal energy, this whole concept of thermal energy moving is exactly what changes matter from state to state. The more thermal energy something has, the more their particles move, and the further apart the particles are, so the less attraction they have. So that means more thermal energy, we have gas. Less thermal energy, we might have a solid. So, matter can 
change state when thermal energy is released or absorbed. Thermal energy is heat, so we're not going to absorb cold. That's a really common misconception, and I want you to only think about heat in, in this class. So, when matter changes state, let's say solid goes to liquid, we call that melting. Each one of these transfers is going to have a special name. So a red arrow will tell you that we are absorbing thermal energy, and a blue arrow will tell you that we're releasing thermal energy. If we go from a solid, like ice, to a liquid, like water, we're melting. And you guys are all familiar with that. What's really happening on the atomic level is that energy is being um, absorbed, and those particles start to move further apart. They have more kinetic energy, they're moving faster, they're moving farther apart, and their attraction is less strong. All right, melting is any time something goes from solid to liquid state. We usually think about water, but melting refers to any matter that goes from solid to liquid. So the temperature at which something changes from a solid to liquid is called its melting point. And melting is when the matter absorbs thermal energy, its temperature rises, and when it is completely melted, water will reach uh, a, well, it will stay the same temperature until it's completely melted. All right, so let's say we have a liquid. We go back to a gas. Now we're gonna release thermal energy. It is going to release heat, release that thermal energy, and we call it freezing. So it's not going to absorb cold. Some people talk about absorbing cold. No. It's releasing thermal energy. So freezing is when anything goes from liquid to solid. Yeah, we think of water a lot as freezing, but anything going from liquid to solid. And the temperature at which a substance freezes is called its freezing point. I know you're like, duh. And energy is released during freezing. So when you put water in your freezer, what you are really doing is releasing energy from that water and it is leaving the water. And thus now this ice has less thermal energy. It's closer packed together. It's got more attractive forces for the particles. All those great things you know. After all the liquid has become a solid, the temperature begins to decrease again. So the temperature stays constant, which is not something a lot of people know, but the temperature stays constant until all of the water has frozen into a solid or all of whatever liquid you're using. So if you're working with a liquid and you start to release thermal energy, you continue to release thermal energy, that will stay this exact same temperature until it reaches a solid, at which point the temperature will drop off. So if you were looking at a graph of the temperature, you would notice that the temperature is, um, it stays constant the whole time that liquid is turning into a solid. If this is the point where everything is finally a solid, it will start to decrease after that. Awesome. You guys are probably already familiar with melting and freezing. But now, if a liquid goes to a gas, we call it vaporization. Vaporization is the change of a liquid to a gas. Um, the temperature at which a substance... Oh, the temperature of a substance doesn't change during vaporization. Just like I said about a liquid going to a solid, when a liquid is going to a gas, it doesn't change until everything has become a gas. It's a really weird thing to think about, but imagine that you have a glass of um, ice water. Until all of that ice melts into a liquid, the temperature is not gonna change. 
uh, same thing happens for all these phase changes. It's going to continue to absorb or release thermal energy until the phase change is achieved, and then it will change. So whenever we're looking at boiling water, the water is not going to change temperature until all of the water has become a gas. So like I said, the substance is absorbing all that thermal energy, but the temperature is not changing. It's very weird, but if you want to try it, go home and test it out. You can put ice in a glass and test the temperature. And when all the ice finally melts, then it will change temperature. So there's actually two forms of vaporization that you've probably heard both words. Um, vaporization that takes place throughout the liquid and it's really rapid, that's what we call boiling. So whenever you boil a pot of water, um, that vaporization is taking place throughout the whole liquid. All of the water molecules are now escaping and becoming gas. The temperature at which liquid boils is called the boiling point, duh. And vaporization that takes place through the surface or at the surface is called evaporation. It's much slower um, because you don't have a lot of thermal energy. So it's, for example, puddle uh, for a rainy day. It takes a long time for some of those puddles to evaporate completely. And that's because evaporation is only happening at the surface and there's not a whole lot of thermal energy getting all throughout. So evaporation, um, which occurs at temperatures below the boiling point, explains how the puddles dry up, like I said. Um, it takes more than speed for water molecules to escape the liquid state. So not only do they have to escape from the puddle, but they have to be in the right place. So during evaporation, the faster molecules must also be near the surface, heading in the right direction, and they must avoid hitting other mo water molecules. So there's a lot to it other than absorbing that kinetic energy and moving fast. So when you boil water, water is going to start vaporizing because it's moving really fast. When water evaporates, the vaporization is happening because it's at the surface, it's moving in the right direction, it's kind of like right place, right time kind of thing. So here we have a picture showing you if this were a puddle, these down here are going to remain in the liquid. They're not moving fast enough, they're not near the surface, they're not going the right direction. In the middle, they might be pulled back in the water and maybe a few of them will escape. But as they get closer to the surface, they're going in the right direction, they might be fast enough to escape from the puddle, so vaporization could occur. All right, the opposite of vaporization is condensation, when a gas goes back to the liquid. Condensation is something you guys are all familiar with the water cycle. Um, gas cools, its particles slow down, and it starts to attract each other and droplets form. And you guys are all familiar with how rain up in the atmosphere condenses and cools, comes together and forms a liquid, and then we get rain. So this is condensation. All right, there is a way for solid to go to gas without being a liquid at all. And we call this process sublimation. Sublimation is pretty special. Um, it does happen sometimes and the most notable example is dry ice. Um, dry ice is actually just carbon dioxide frozen and as this carbon dioxide um, absorbs thermal energy, it goes straight into gaseous form. It doesn't go to liquid form first. So some substances can change directly from solid to gas without ever becoming a liquid. We call it sublimation. The surface particles of the solid gain enough energy to become a gas directly. They don't have to become a liquid. And this is really cool, and this is what you see during Halloween, whenever everybody makes those like cauldrons that bevel over with dry ice, um, this is what's happening, sublimation. And there's one more process. It is deposition. So deposition is the process through which a gas can become a solid without going to a liquid again. So deposition occurs when a substance changes directly from a gas to a solid, and this explains how frost forms or snow forms in clouds, because what happens is, um, at least in these two cases, water 
in the gaseous state cools quickly enough to become a solid without ever entering the liquid state. So back to this state change pyramid, you'll notice that every time um, a su substance absorbs thermal energy, we have a red arrow. So it takes thermal energy to be absorbed into a solid for that solid to become a liquid. It takes thermal energy for a liquid to become a gas, and thermal energy is absorbed for a solid to become a gas through sublimation. When thermal energy is released, that is, heat is leaving that object, um, gas can condense into a liquid, gas can um, go through deposition to become a solid, and liquids can freeze to become a solid. So keep in mind where that thermal energy is going, because that's the real reason these things are happening. what I want you to do is this. You are going to make a foldable to help you kind of remember what all of these phase changes are. So if you take three sheets of paper and you line them up, I don't know how close I am to my camera, if you line them up kind of like this and you fold them over, you will have a book with six little flaps. So what you're going to do today is you'll have a, a sheet of paper um, that the substitute will give to you and you can use what's in your green bins to cut apart those pictures and then paste them inside of this book. Um, so what I want you to do is put all of the six processes on each one of these tabs and describe them underneath and glue the pictures where they belong. So if there's pictures or there's descriptions, you need to put them in this where, you, where they belong. I'm not going to take this today. Well, I can't take it. The sub isn't going to take this today. Um, just hold on to it. I hope you've turned your homework into her. If you have not, please give her your homework and I'll check it off. Um, I will be back tomorrow and we'll talk more about matter and all of these wonderful processes. Um, if you have any questions, you can look in your book. We are in chapter seven, I believe. Um, you'll find it. So we'll check this tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.